Hey crocheters! In this video we will be crocheting the first 10 rows of the Camille octopus leg. This pattern did come out a couple of years ago uh, but one of the requests that I've gotten over the years has been a little bit of help with the legs because they can be tricky. So we're going to walk through the first 10 rows in this video to get the ball rolling and to answer any questions you guys might have on the legs. So let's get started. So we'll begin with a magic ring. So to do that, just wrap the yarn around our fingers like so. So we'll have an X on this side and two parallel lines on the other. We'll simply insert the hook underneath, pull through like this and give it a twist towards ourselves as we pull. And then that will create another X on this side and we'll put our hook underneath this strand here and then pull that through and that gives us our magic ring. Inside that magic ring we will single crochet five stitches so reach into the ring, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that's one, two, three, four, And we'll go ahead and pull our yarn tail here, pull it tight, which closes up our circle there. And then this, um, all of the legs will be worked in concentric circles. So we join using the invisible um, slip stitch, I think is what it's called. So what we'll do is we're going to take our hook out of the loop that we're in and we're going to go through the back side of the very first stitch like so we're going to take the loop that we did have put it over and then we're going to pull that through and that's how we close it so that it's a perfect circle every time all right so now that we're there we're ready to start the second row in the second row we're going to single crochet four so we're going to work right into that loop that we are into that stitch that we were just in. So we'll reach into it like so, yarn over, pull through, and that's our very first single crochet. And we'll repeat that three more times. So one, two, and then three. for a total of four stitches. And before I finish that loop, or finish pulling through on that last uh, single crochet, I'm going to switch colors because our next color is, well, we're bringing in our color B. So I'm going to pull through like that just to finish off the stitch and that will effectively switch colors for me. And then I'm going to increase in that last stitch. And what I like to do is I like to um, crochet over my yarn tail that way it is nice and secure and I don't have to worry about it coming undone so there's our increased stitch there and then I I know <laughs> and this is going to be consistent through the rest of the pattern that um, we will switch back to color A at the beginning of the next row on each of the legs so I'm just going to switch back right now so I'm going to switch back to my color A by pulling it through that way and then I will finish and work it in a concentric circle like so so right now you can see my work is inside out for some reason when I do my very first couple of rows it always seems that they just naturally go inside out and then I have to force it to be right side out. 
but it's actually quite a challenge for me to get the very first rows to not be inside out. So that's just how it works. I don't know if this is um, something that you struggle with as well, but it certainly is a trial for me. All right, so now we're going on to row three, and this is where we're going to start working in our half double crochets. And almost all of our color A stitches are going to be half double crochets from here on out, so we're going to need to get really comfortable with these. Um, and all I do for the half double crochet that is at the beginning of the row is I just yarn over and insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. So I've got three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through, just like a typical half double crochet. I don't do any chains. Um, I suppose you could. I'm just, I'm more concerned about my work having excessive holes uh, than I am about having the very perfect stitch height. Um, in these legs, we're going for a very, um, now I'll just pull one up here. We're getting a very twisted shape. And so as we work um, these, you know, beginning half double crochets, even though they're not going to necessarily be the perfect stitch height, um, the fact that they're a little bit shorter doesn't really matter because it kind of aids in the, the twisting of the octopus leg. All right, so the very first stitch is a half double crochet increase. So we'll work another half double crochet into that first stitch and then we'll continue around with a half double crochet three. So one, two, and then three. Once again on this strand, or at the, the end of this stitch, I'm going to be switching to the color B. So I'm going to pull through my color B instead of finishing the stitch with my color A. And I'm going to do a bobble stitch here. So the bobble stitch is what gives us that sort of like suction cup look that um, octopus octopi have. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to start by yarning over, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and we're going to yarn over and pull through two. Then we'll repeat that, we'll re-yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and we'll pull through two. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and we'll pull through um, again. So I usually like to do it until I have five loops on my stitch. Um, if you want, you can make smaller bobbles and you can just do four loops. But I think it, it makes a nice full bobble stitch when there's at least five. So once we've got your five loops here on the stitch, you're just going to yarn over and pull through all of the stitches like that. And what I do is I keep my um, my um, middle finger here just in the back of that bobble as I pull it through because I'm, another thing that my my crocheting tends to do usually when I pull through my uh, bobbles are pointed toward the inside so if if as I am pulling through those last five stitches I just hold my finger there it helps to give it the correct shape immediately alright then the next stitch is going to be single crochet. I'll yarn over, pull through, and once again here we are at the end so we're going to be switching back to our color A to finish off that stitch. And you can see that's really loose there so I'm going to just pull it tight. Yep, so I have a, a tighter stitch there and we'll finish with the invisible slip stitch. On to row four. So for row four, we're going to do half double crochet five in our color A. So go one, 
two, three, four, five. And also, I'll just bring up a note really quick. As you work with your project, um, your yarns are naturally going to get twisted. And so I try to, I mean, either every few rows you just go and untwist, or what I, I try to kind of be conscious of which yarn is on top of the other. And when I go ahead and switch my yarns, I try to untangle them. Um, so here at the end of that last half double crochet, we're switching to our color B. So I just try and untangle as I go, and then we'll be slip stitching two. So we go one, pull through, that's how a slip stitch is made. And on the second slip stitch, we actually just yarn over the color B and pull that through. So we still end with our, you know, having two stitches of our color B, um, but we've effectively switched to the color A. So something I am going to do, so I'm going to just take the time here to tuck this yarn tail in because it gets a little bit distracting. It can make our project look muddy. Let's go ahead and close off. And begin row five. All right, once again, I'll half double crochet five. So one, two, three, four, five, finish off the stitch with our color B, then we'll increase, and I'm going to carry the, this yarn. I mean, so far we haven't hardly gone any space at all with, um, you know, we have a very narrow sliver here with our color B, so I haven't really worried too much about carrying this, but um, I am going to crochet over it now as I do an increase stitch. And then a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, and then switch to our color A to finish off the stitch. All right, now at the end of this row, we can start. So we're going to take um, a nylon. I, I typically like to stuff with nylons. You don't have to, but I do think it makes the project higher quality. So for each of the legs, I'm going to use knee highs because it's just a little bit cleaner for demonstration purposes. Um, and all you're going to do is you're going to start by opening it up and putting in a pretty little amount of stuffing into the bottom. I and mean, we don't have a lot going on here just yet. But the, the reason why we're starting to stuff so early is that um, because this leg twists and it is so long, if we don't start relatively soon, um, we end up not being able to reach all of the spaces that we need to. And it can be quite a challenge to get the stuffing all the way down. So we will be working around this from now on, which I, I know it's a little bit cluttered when it comes to trying to watch and view, but it does make for a better end product. So let's move on to row six. 
So we'll half double crochet five. One, two, three. four, five, and in that last half of my half double crochet, I'm going to yarn over and pull this through. We're going to bobble stitch into our first color B here. So one, two, three, and four. And once we get that, that leaves us with our five loops on the hook. And yarn over and pull through. Once again, I keep my finger there in the back so I can pop it forward. And then in the next two stitches, we're going to slip stitch. And I would encourage you to keep these slip stitches um, not overly tight. I mean, a little bit loose because slip stitches are naturally very tight. And um, they'll be a challenge to work with um, as we go on if they're too tight. It'll just be really hard to get any of our, um, like the next row stitches in and a lot of of our color B stitches will be slip stitches. So when you're when you're working your slip stitch, make it uh, kind of loose because naturally they're excessively tight. And we'll finish off the row. All right, row seven. Going to yarn over, make our first half double crochet. We'll continue around. And as you're going, it's a good idea to kind of check your gauge. And I mean, I'm not super technical about gauge. I, I would say if I can start seeing big holes in my project, like I kind of have a bigger one there that I need to just tighten it up a little bit. I have found that when I am doing a tutorial that my gauge is just a little bit off, I think because of nerves. <laughs> All right, so at the very end, the last of the stitch we're going to pull through there, finish it off with our color B, and then we're going to slip stitch three. One, two, and we'll switch to our color A for the last slip stitch. Close it off. Row eight, once again, half double crochet five. So what we're doing here is we're just trying to get the length, um, which is why we have so many rows of half double crochet five. Um, whereas the color B is what's going to be more interesting with the bobble stitches and the slip stitches also make it um, visually more interesting because the, the contrast of the slip stitches and the half double crochets is what gives us our curve. So we'll switch to our color B. Increase. And 
one single crochet two one two finish off the row. Row nine, half double crochet five. One, two, three, four, to our color B and also when you're switching it's a good idea to make sure that this is not too tight it needs to be loose enough that it's not going to like change the shape of your project and shouldn't allow our nylon to get caught in it So now this is loosened up nicely, the yarn that we're kind of crocheting over, and we're going to slip stitch two, so one, two, then I would make sure to crochet over kind of all your loose threads here because we're carrying the yellow, um, and we have this this floating um, cream color here in the back and just to crochet over all of those so that we they're kept out of the way of our nylon so that when we go to stuff it there are no issues and so now we'll do our bobble One more yarn over and pull through all of them. And the last stitch is a slip stitch where we'll switch to our color. the end of row nine. Row ten, we're going to switch it up here a little bit. We're going to do a half double crochet increase. So increase there, then half double crochet four. One, two, three, four, I'll switch to our B. Once again, you can kind of see that I'm creating a loop here, like pulling it this way as I switch colors and, <clears throat> and pull that tight. Sorry, as I switch colors, um, that way we have some looseness here. I'll pull this strand tight to kind of anchor that. And then we're going to slip stitch four. Let me straighten out my nylon. And remember, once again, to keep these kind of loose. And we will carry our yellow yarn as well. So 
one, two, and it's getting kind of muddy in here. Three, and then here's our last stitch right here. We'll switch to our color A yarn. Finish off the row. Alright, so now is a good time to add some more stuffing. We've gone an additional five rows. It's not so far that we shouldn't be able to get it tucked in there well. But if we go too much farther, things are going to get challenging. Just gonna force that down in there. There we go. That, that feels better. I like I like my amigurumi to be somewhat firm, so I think that feels pretty good, especially where I just stuffed it. Um, but I guess you can you can go softer or more firm depending on what you like. Hey crocheters, I hope you found that video helpful. If this is the first time you've heard of this pattern and are interested in buying it, you can check it out on my website at oldsoulcrochetco.com forward slash shop. If you are also interested in the potential to buy a full tutorial crochet along, uh, let me know in the comments below because this is something I've thought about for a couple of years, but I need a little bit more feedback on as to whether I'm going to try and create um, videos for specific animals to sell, like a full tutorial for an individual animal, or whether that's not really something that people want. So let me know in the comments below. And until next time, make something beautiful.